Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Yusuf, moderator for this conference. Welcome to the conference call of Root Mobile Limited, arranged by Concept Investor Relations, to discuss its Q2 FY24 results. We have with us today Mr. Rajdeep Kumar Gupta, Managing Director and Group CEO, Mr. Gautam Badalia, Group's Chief Strategy Officer and Chief Investor Relations Officer, and Mr. Suresh Jankar, Chief Financial Officer. At this moment, all participants are in listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session. At that time, if you have a question, you may press star and one on your telephone keypad. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that some of the statements made in today's earnings call may be forward-looking in nature and may involve certain risk and uncertainties. Kindly refer to slide number two of the presentation for the detailed disclaimer. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rajdeep Gupta, Managing Director and Group CEO, Root Mobile Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Yusuf. Good evening, everyone. I hope this finds all of you in good spirit as we near the festive season. I have some exciting news to share tonight. Even though the month of July and August typically see downturn for, the, for us, given the holidays and unusual, a usual dip in global volume, Root Mobile has not just preserved the volume but also soared and registering our highest ever revenue. In fact, even amidst of the global challenges, our year-on-year -year growth in both revenue and PAT in H1 FY24 has exceeded over 25%. This past quarter has been pivotal for us, marked by securing several significant deals that promises to propel our growth trajectory. Here are some of the standout agreements we have clinched. First off, collaboration with VI India this quarter. It's a major international A2P termination and firewall management services deal, and one we are particularly proud of. Our history with IDEA and now our re-engagement with the merged entity Vodafone IDEA underscores our platform robustness. This association alone has the potential to bring around US $100 million US dollar in revenue. We are gearing up and in process of deploying our firewall, which will go live very soon. In Southeast Asia, we clinched another major international A2P termination and firewall management service deal, and it's already live and running. Finally, there's a global e-commerce giant we partner with in Q1 FY24, they are onboarded and live with us now. In fact, now we are expecting to gain more traffic from international destinations, including India. This win, this big wins make me confident in saying we are on track for our annual revenue growth of 20 to 25%, and frankly, we might just hit that top mark. Additionally, since Q1 FY24, we all hit several milestones. We got, some of them are, we got a nod as a major provider in Gartner CPAS Magic Quadrant for, of 23 and were featured in four Gartner Hypercycle reports this year. We have forged in significant partnership in Bangladesh with Robbie Exiata Limited focusing on RCS business messaging. We successfully launched Root Amplify our flagship event. It was a melting pot of industry leaders where we shared and gained insight into key areas like customer engagement and digital identity. Our new product revenue has shot up by staggering 64%. Our collaboration, like the one enabling WhatsApp-based ticketing system for uh, Delhi Metro, only goes on to prove our uh, innovative product development. Now, for our deal with Proximus Group, everything is on track. We are eyeing to wrap up by quarter Q4 of 24, we have even set up an integration governance committee pulling in a senior leaders from Proximus, Root Mobile, and Telesign, all working together to ensure smooth sailing. And every step we have taken so far is just reinforces our confidence in this partnership. I'm personally thrilled about what lies ahead, especially leading the CPAS division post deal. Last but not the least, Based on our sterling performance this quarter, the board has approved an interim dividend of 
to be free per share. Big thank you to all involved. Now I will hand over to Gautam who will share more about our financial highlights. Over to you, Gautam. Thank you, Dagi. Good evening, everyone. Season greetings to all of you. We have already uploaded our quarterly earnings presentation on our website as well as the stock exchange website. Hope you had a chance to go through the presentation. I'll quickly summarize our financial and operating performance before opening the floor for Q&A. The quarter gone by has yet again been an outstanding quarter considering the seasonality of the business. The key highlight for the quarter gone by has been the large deals that we have won, as highlighted by Razi Bhagia. The throughput from some of these large deals should start to reflect from Q4 onwards. Hence, we will believe that we will be closer, closer to the upper end of our revenue guidance band of 20-25%. More importantly, FY25 looks very promising on the back of full year effect of these large deals, plus the benefits of synergies that should start to flow to Root Mobile from the Proximus deal. In terms of the update on the Proximus transaction, as Rajiv highlighted, the regulatory filings are well on track, and it seems that the transaction, including the mandatory tender offer, should close during uh, Q4 FY24. In terms of the synergy that was called out at the time of signing, we have been able to further validate the same based upon the entering work done so far. Based on the exhaustive work done over the past six weeks by the integration governance team, we reconfirmed that the overall Euro 90 million or the US dollar 100 million EBITDA synergy stands completely justified. Out of these, some of the synergy buckets where Root Mobile will stand to benefit are as follows. In terms of bucket one, which is the revenue uh, and cross-selling synergy, Root Mobile will leverage the digital identity platform of telesign in emerging markets. Digital identity as a product is a very unique SaaS offering, which is used to curb digital frauds and entails gross margins, which are not worth of 80%. Uh, Root Mobile will also be making inroads into untapped large global, global accounts through telesign to service their requirements in emerging markets. In terms of the synergy bucket too, which is OPEX savings and synergy, uh, create a state-of-the-art product innovation lab in India to focus on new product initiatives, automation, and AI ML capabilities. Drive economies of scale by consolidating the cloud infra, software licenses, and vendors across the group, and work towards a low-cost operating model through the shared service uh, center construct and leverage the capabilities of our BPO arm, which is called to connect. In terms of synergy bucket three, direct cost synergies. Drive better efficiencies owing to higher economies of scale and deepen uh, as well as expand our exclusive MNO connect. Th these initiatives will definitely accelerate our journey towards a billion dollar revenue with 15% EBITDA margin target by 2027. Just to further reinstate, this deal will pave the way for Root Mobile to be a global CPAS player in two cents with an unparalleled reach and a very comprehensive product stack of its own products coupled with licensed products from the group. By virtue of this deal, we should be able to demonstrate uh, quote-unquote, cost leadership at scale with industry-leading growth rates. As I said, this is only an interim update and will be fine-tuned further. As and when these are further crystallized into the final operating model, we shall update you on the same. Highlighting some of the key business metrics uh, for the quarter and uh, the, the half-yearly numbers gone by. In volume terms, we processed over 31 billion transactions in Q2 FI24, which is again the highest quarterly volume Billable volumes processed by us till date. Billable transactions uh, increased from 26.9 billion in Q2 FY23 and 29.5 billion in Q1 FY24 to 31.3 billion in Q2 FY24. Average realization per billable transaction marginally decreased from 32.8 PESA in Q1 FY24 to 32.4 PESA in Q2 FY24 owing to increase in domestic volumes in India. In terms of geography, India continues to be our largest market by termination, accounting for 47% of our revenue by termination. You may refer to slide 20 of the presentation. Domestic volumes in India witnessed a double-digit growth despite the NLD price increase. 
we continue to witness very strong momentum in our on our next generation products new product revenues grew by 64% on a yoy basis and 53% on a qoq basis in q2 fy24 in terms of operating overheads in q2 fy24 employee benefit expenses decreased primarily due to rollback of performance based stock options and cancellation of esops owing to resignation by few employees the increase in other expenses was primarily due to foreign currency translation loss of inr 91 million and increase in travel and business promotion expenses both totaling to an increase of inr 30 million the business promotion expenses was largely related to our flagship uh, root amplify event which was held in mumbai in terms of ebitda ebitda grew by 16% yoy from 1094 million in q2 fy23 to 1268 million in q2 fy24 there was a sequential growth of 2.5% from a balance sheet standpoint average receivable date stood at 73 days and average payable date stood at 64 days normalized cash flow conversion in h1 fy24 was very strong at 77% you may refer to slide 16 for the same with this we open the floor for q and a thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handset while asking a question Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Ronak Cheda from Avrika Capital. Please go ahead. Hey, hi, uh, Gautam. Uh, congratulations on the results. First of all, um, I have two questions. uh first question is on, on the e-commerce giants business right uh, we've done a multi uh, geography deal so can you just uh, explain on this further and how much of this business would broadly split into india and uh, the other emerging geographies uh, how should one think of the deal itself that's the first question okay So yeah, Gautam. Let me just answer this question. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, Ronak, I think uh, India uh, is going to be at least uh, about 50% of the revenue, and the remaining 50% will come from international. We have signed a contract uh, with this uh, e-com giant uh, for 10 countries, and uh, including UK and some of the Asian countries as well. As well, and I think the connectivity and the binding is already done, and the testing is also done, and we already started getting traffic for India. so we believe in by next quarter uh, maybe by this quarter we can see more uh, traffic but in terms of uh, split i think 50% revenue will be india and revenue 50% percent will be for international understood that was helpful um my second question is on uh, you actually touched upon in the opening remarks on the synergies which could flow from the uh major process and some business coming from telecom uh i mean uh, how soon can we start looking at that uh, in the results itself uh, will we wait for uh, the deal to complete and then this will flow or we should start seeing it from uh, uh, this quarter itself gautam okay. yeah so uh see i think i think uh, we kind of at this point in time working on wireframes that even before the deal telesign was a partner with root mobile and we used to help them for for some part of uh, their termination into emerging markets that continues uh, as is in fact the throughput on that has increased uh, uh, to some extent but uh, but uh, i think line share of synergies will start to flow uh, post closing okay, understood and uh, just last bookkeeping question on your uh, working capital uh, i see the receivable days have gone up uh, should we read too much into it or this is just a uh, quarterly phenomena yeah it's i mean uh, i mean you shouldn't read too much into it in fact a, a few days uh, post the closure of uh, the quarter i mean we received uh, one of one of the payments from a large ott player so i mean uh, 
we've also have to account for, I mean, uh, July, August, uh, uh, and even September to an extent. I mean, these are typical holiday seasons, I think, uh, in most of these places. So I think uh, that you shouldn't read too much into it. Uh, I think from a uh, free cash uh, or, or operating cash generation standpoint, I think uh, we've done fairly well. Understood. These were my questions. Thank you so much and best of luck for your future quarters. Thanks, Thank, Thank you. you. Next question is from the line of Nikhil Chaudhary from Nuama. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, first question is regarding Vodafone uh, idea deal. Uh, I, uh, I hope you understand that uh, given the contradictory filing by, you know, uh, both the company ones will also contacting you. We just want to uh, understand uh, uh, how basically you accounted for USD 100 million in uh, revenue potential and any rough timeline in, in terms of when you will be able to materialize it. That's my first question. I have follow up. So, Nikhil, hi. I think, uh, as I uh, said already, the, the deployment of our firewall is already in process. And uh, based on the current the timeline which we have given to Vodafone idea, we are looking out to go live by December. Uh, so that's the current timeline we have. And uh, what was your other question? How we quantify $100 million? Yes. And timeline for that recognition. So it's very simple math, right? Uh, if you see the number of subscribers, uh, what uh, Vodafone idea has about $200 million. And you multiply it by particular SMS, uh, you know, and then you say five cents per SMS cost. I think that is the kind of math we have uh, uh, done at our end while giving this number to the market. And we believe that uh, the number may be more than $100 million, uh, but uh, we are a little bit conservative with giving that $100 million uh, number. So, is it just the entire revenue because of our exclusivity will flow through Rune Mobile. So, this yes. revenue... I mean, whosoever gets the pie of it will have to necessarily terminate through Root Mobile. So we get the 100% pie of this revenue to Root Mobile. Sure. So is it fair to uh, Azim Rajiv uh, uh, that this 100 million will start flowing from quarter four of uh, 24 and next 12 months uh, we can see it uh, flowing through our CNS? So we can consider quarter four. Yes, you're right. Uh, second question is in terms of uh, ILD revenue. Uh, this quarter, uh, while NLD has done quite well, which you have highlighted, ILD we have seen uh, decline. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, maybe due to volume decline. Can you please uh, uh, help us understand what led to that? So I think, as I said, seasonality, right? Uh, we always need to understand that H1 is 45% of our revenue and H2 is uh, almost uh, 55 uh, Now, uh, Diwali and all the other uh, festive season is going to be start uh, in the month of this quarter especially. So we will see the growth and I think there's nothing, uh, the dip is basically based on the seasonality and, and nothing to worry about. And we have seen the growth in this particular, uh, um, in fact, October month and uh, we see the growth going to come in November and December as well on ILD business. Uh, sure. So just last question uh, from my side. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you have highlighted in your cash flow statement about 297 crore uh, basically you deposited for firewall deal. Uh, based on the filing by your competitor, uh, uh, 57 crore is the revenue basically just on the firewall deal. And you have highlighted earlier it recently deposit uh, you know, a three to six months of uh, payment to uh, telecom operator. So just want to understand uh, how big is the maybe the other con uh, contract or uh, what kind of uh, ROI we are looking uh, if my calculation is right maybe. Uh, sorry, can you please repeat your query? I didn't understand what was the query. Uh, so we have given this 297 to two operators, and for one operator, uh, a partial payment was made last quarter. Uh, the final payment will be done once we are close to going live. So, Gautam, what I want to understand is uh, the uh, quantum of uh, Vodafone Firewall deal based on disclosure by the competitor who lost the contract was about 67 crore for annual, right? So just want to understand, and given it was one of the biggest firewall deal, uh, what basically led to deposits of 300 crore, which is you know much larger. So, okay, okay. Uh, no, let me let me just let me just correct you. I got your question. So there is two uh, stream of revenue. Okay, first is the firewall revenue, which is uh, 
firewall deployed by 365 square at Rutovel company. And there's a revenue share between 365 square and uh, Vodafone. Okay, that is a separate revenue. Then when all the traffic which flows through Rutovel platform to Vodafone idea, that's an additional revenue we generate. So I think if, if you're talking about one uh, firewall revenue, which is separate, I think that number comes to the number which you're talking about. Then there's additional revenue potential and margin which Rutovel generates traffic directly with working to DD players. So you have to consider it in that way. And that is a potential we have seen in this overall deal. And we believe that a platform is going to play a very critical role to mitigate or to at least mitigate the risk of uh, the gray routes, which was still there on their network. And uh, we identified certain uh, gray routes which, been, which has been used. And with our firewall, we believe that uh, we will uh, mitigate the, those risks of gray route. And we will de definitely deliver the commitment which we are uh, already made to uh, order for an idea. Sure, that's it. Uh, very helpful. Good luck for coming to you. Thank you. Sir. Sure. you are saying something. But also, Nikhil, I mean, the, uh, the deal, I mean, from when uh, it was with, with uh, the erstwhile uh, partner and it's moved to us, I think the price has also moved quite a bit. So the deal value per se, I think, would have more than doubled, right? So, uh, so uh, it was not an apples to apples comparison from that perspective. So, uh, uh, I think we also have to kind of take that into our account. Understood. Understood, Gautam. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sarvesh Gupta from Maximal Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, sir, uh, just on the realization piece, so I think we were expecting some increase in the realization, but because of the mix, it has come down a bit. Uh, but uh, net of the mix impact uh, is there? What has been the realization increase for this quarter, like to like? Yeah, if we adjust for the sharp increase in our domestic uh, India volumes, uh, uh, the, the average realization would have uh, marginally gone up. Okay. Okay. And and uh, we understand the seasonality, but I think the YOI growth has sort of come down a bit in this quarter. Um, uh, so any 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 particular color that you can provide there? No, so the base has also kind of increased quite a bit. And YOI, I mean, we demonstrated, uh, you're talking about it from a H1 standpoint or quarterly no, standpoint? Q2 YOI versus Q1 YOI I was alluding to. Oh, sequential. Stronger. No, no, sir. Not Q2 over Q1. I was saying Q2 versus last year Q2. And Q1 versus last year Q1, so this Q2 versus last year Q2, the growth rate has sort of come down a bit compared to what we saw in Q1. No, so last year, I think there were a few acquisitions also that got baked in. And now everything has been kind of consolidated with a larger base. I think we're talking about uh, uh, for this year growing at a 20 to 25% on a YOY basis. And within that, I think basis, some of these deal wins we're talking about uh, hitting the top end of that uh, uh, band. Understood. And finally, sir, you have mentioned about some resignation by some employees, etc. So this is like, um, you know, some par course uh, re uh, resignations or these are, you know, some of the efforts towards the rationalization or... Uh, no, 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 it's not towards rationalization. So what had happened is, I think we have called it out multiple times in previous calls also, a lot of... Uh, the the cost I think that was there in terms of the employee benefit expense was uh, attributable to uh, uh, the ESOP uh, cost, where wherein a lot of that cost was front loaded, uh, front loaded rather, and uh, uh, in in uh, 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 in the past I think when we had issued this uh, or granted this uh, ESOP under the uh, ESOP 2021 scheme. A lot of these ESOPs were rolled out to employees and there were performance criteria. So wherever, I mean, employees have not been able to perform, those ESOPs have kind of been relinquished. On top of that, there are, there are some cases where employees have resigned and then some of those ESOPs have been kind of rolled back. So it's, it's completely and purely on performance and, and uh, owing to resignation of few employees. Understood, sir. Uh, is there a way to quantify the deal with the large e-commerce companies? Uh, you know, sort of a number are we looking at? 
so we are uh, uh, service we are at very early stage uh, of our live traffic uh, probably we can quantify this uh, in more detail by next quarter or by this quarter end and once we have a next quarter running call okay sir okay thank you all the best sir thank you thank you next question is from the line of dipesh mehta from mk global please go ahead thanks for the opportunity a uh, couple of question uh, first of all just want to understand i i think you partly alluded about the guidance kind of thing uh, now even for lower end i think you indicated about uh, last time at least 20 percentage and in the earlier prepared remark you said 20 to 25 percentage and uh, high chances of eating up per end so which is roughly let's say 25 percentage which require very significant acceleration in h2 even to reach 20 percentage you require 15 16 percentage growth over h1 and other way to put is 9 10 percentage sick is here to hit lower end so can you help us understand i understand about seasonality in december quarter but it is materially higher even including what of funding so the base i think you need to also consider the e-commerce uh, uh, client which is uh, going to, which has gone live now and that uh, effect is going to be in this quarter and next quarter plus the vodafone deal we are also working on certain more firewall deal which we will uh, will announce very soon so keeping all this in mind i think uh, we are very uh, much sure that we will achieve uh, our guidance which we have given to the market so more like 25% you are confident yes yeah it will be closer to the 25% than 20% understand so yeah. uh, sir second question is about the security deposit i think we mentioned to mno uh, for the roughly around 300 crore kind of number whether any payment is related to vodafone also covered here yeah the past part of it okay and in h2 you expect any material number or this number will taper of material in h2 so h2 also i think there will be uh, some some bit of that will come through Plus, plus one other deal that I think I have talked about. Yeah. That happens. Okay, in that case, your reported OCF might be still very muted. Right way to understand it? No, no, that's correct. But, but uh, I think from a from a uh, I think we've always been kind of uh, very very uh, uh, particular that uh, some of these are capital kind of a uh, capex kind of uh, investments where we are investing this for two years with two years payback. Where uh, the ROC tends to be north of the 25%. So, so uh, I think uh, once we are done with uh, uh, this additional, uh, this new deal as well, I think uh, our plates will be completely full, and for the next two years, I think we will be able to uh, see uh, meaningful improvement. I mean, in OCF, uh, not only normalized uh, uh, OCF, but even the reported OCF. Understood. So 25 will be much better here from reported That's OCF also. Right. That's correct. And last question from my side is about new product. I think very strong growth. Uh, so just want to understand what explains and how we expect that trend to continue. Thanks. So this is, I think, uh, we are uh, investing heavily, and uh, I think our focus uh, is always on uh, new product along with uh, messaging. And uh, the kind of uh, pipeline we have as of now, and we believe that growth is going to be uh, significant in coming quarters. is it single product driving it in terms of whatsapp or you no no it is no it's a mix of a product which we have as a omni channel stack which we have so uh, it's a mix of all product understand thank you thank you next question is from the line of amit chandra from hdfc securities please go ahead uh yes sir thanks for the opportunity so my first question is uh, and uh, on the on the volume growth so obviously we have seen both nld and ild price hikes and uh, we have seen some volume drops because of the increase in price so how do we see you know the volumes from here on uh, you know uh, in terms of the uh, like you know the nld volumes can also come down because there has been a price hike and if i'm not wrong the volumes are down in this quarter so you did you have an aberration or is it uh, you know going to a you know something that they are finding some other alternatives so amit uh, rajdeep here our volume on nld is grown uh, it is not gone down yeah double digit growth yeah 
Okay. And uh, no, but uh, overall at industry level, uh, no, I'm just talking about. See, see, I, 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 I cannot uh, comment on industry level uh, based on the customer base we have, based on the customer we onboarded in the last few quarters. We see a significant growth in those customer, and due to which our volume has increased. In spite of price increase at NLD level. Okay. And uh, you know, sir, in terms of the you know the firewall deals that uh, we are taking up, obviously these deals are uh, you know based on upfront commitments in terms of volumes to the operators. So you know what confidence level we have or what kind of growth we are assuming uh, in terms of uh, you know the existing volumes that we ha- are having. You know, so, uh, yeah. you know, like committing these. Uh, higher numbers because uh, you, you're saying that okay. yeah, so it's um, around 300 crores for a 800 800 crores kind of annual revenue, and uh, uh, you know, if I'm not wrong, this number was much lower uh, in the earlier version. Okay, and uh, the no, no, no. I think I think you need to also. Yes. Amit, I got your question. The earlier uh, version was the price was half the current price. Okay, it was about two cent or three cent. Now price is five cent. Okay, so you need to consider that. Uh, apart from you know, how confident we are, our firewall is deployed in 16 countries. Okay, we are doing this job in multiple countries, and we have the insight and we have so much confident about our product that deploying this product in the with VI will definitely generate more revenue for VI and for Automobile. And based on the insight we have got from our platform for various other countries, I think that is the confidence oh, it gives. It gives us a, to make sure that we can achieve our numbers. So it is all about our, uh, you know, product. Uh, we always believe that is one of the best in the market as of now. Okay. And just adding, just adding to what Rajesh said, it is. Uh, I mean, because of the robustness of the product. Uh, I mean, we have been, we had been servicing uh, idea for some time. Where, I mean. I think for the long, longest period of time on the firewall, I mean, we were the first ones to kind of get this product to kind of uh, uh, initiated uh, and uh, approved by an operator in India, right? So uh, it was only after the merger that it uh, switched to another partner. But within a year's time, we realized the robustness of our platform and switched it back to us. So it's not uh, just merely on, on the commitment. I think commitment was uh, not the, uh, uh, the factor, I mean, to uh, kind of get this swung in our favor. It was the robustness of the platform, the capabilities that we have and the reach that we have with uh, the global audience that helps us garner this kind of uh, 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 revenues for an operator. So another thing, Amit, just to give more uh, clarity out here, we work almost with all the ODT players globally now, Okay, including to name it everyone. And India as a market, uh, we always, I think we have our firewall deployed with the BSNL. Based on the data points which we have received from VSNL firewall, and we are 100% confident that what kind of volume Vodafone ideas can, should have on their uh, network. And based on that calculation, what we have got from VSNL, we uh, uh, give this kind of commitment. And uh, we are very much sure that we will achieve that. So as an India market understanding, we have very clear understanding with our current firewall with VSNL right now. Okay. And so these, you uh, know, uh, like, uh, these commitments uh, is like uh, for every year. So every year we will have to put in this kind of money, or uh, not exactly. It is. It, it's a. It's just one security deposit we have to pay, and based on a month-on-month basis, we have committed the, uh, the uh, volume, which we are sure that we will achieve that. Okay. Okay. So thank you and all the best. And uh, Amit, just to just to kind of uh, revalidate that, two ninety-seven crores is not. Uh, uh, purely for Vodafone, it's for two two mobile network operators. Just to kind of lay the uh, path yeah. and correct on that. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Swapnil Portuke from GM Financial Limited. Please go ahead. Hey, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so I have a couple of questions. First one is on your deal with uh, uh, Telesign. And uh, last quarter, I remember you had mentioned that uh, uh, you uh, there was some uh, uh, monthly revenues that you were trying to uh, 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 that you were supposed to get from Telesign, uh, and uh, and over a period of time that revenue was supposed to increase. 
so I, I just want to understand like uh, uh, what's the update on that uh, uh, where were we uh, uh, at the end of last quarter and the current quarter and uh, how long will it take for the uh, the entire potential revenues uh, from telesign to flow in through yeah. route mobile that's question number one. Sure. So, uh, Swapnil, I think uh, even prior to the deal, I think uh, Telesign and Root Mobile were partners. We were working together. But as I said, I mean, since the deal, uh, I mean, we've been working closely on various uh, integration frameworks. So, the throughput has increased. Definitely, it has increased. And we've been adding more value I mean, to Telesign I mean, because of our strong entrenchment into the emerging markets. So, that continues as is. And we're still working as partners. But, but the day, the day, uh, day we are able to close this deal, I think uh, uh, we believe we'll be able to get uh, significantly more uh, traffic I mean, from telesign to road mobile. I think that is uh, uh, because today, I mean, because of certain competition sensitivity and uh, uh, certain legal guardrails, uh, we are not able to kind of uh, completely be as transparent as what we can be uh, subsequent to the deal. And uh, uh, once once the deal closes, I definitely, I think we believe there will be a significant increase in the throughput. Any uh, numbers you can uh, share? I mean, it's too early for us to say. As I said, I mean, we've done some interim work on this. Let us let us come to the final leg of that work, uh, the, the wireframe. At that point in time, we'll definitely come and give you more more uh, crystallized framework of how, how things will pan out. Okay. Uh, the other way to look at this is like I was looking at your tier one uh, CPAC revenue share. Uh, now that has been uh, uh, declining, uh, you know, uh, 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 quite a bit. Uh, uh, so I just wanted to understand: uh, is this the impact of value first uh, uh, acquisition, you know, by one of the competition or partly yes, partly yes, partly yes. Okay. Uh, and as and when uh, telecom revenues uh, ramp up, uh, we will see some uh, increase in the revenue share from this particular metric. Possibly, yes, yeah. Okay. Uh, right. And uh, uh, and just on the balance sheet side, uh, so uh, I see that uh, your uh, borrowings uh, seem to have increased. Uh, I mean, uh, if I were to add up your long-term and short-term borrowings, uh, that add up to around 150 crores. Now we do have a decent amount of cash uh, as well. Uh, my uh, uh, question is like as to uh, what is the reason that uh, we are seeing this increase in our uh, borrowings number uh, on a Q and Q basis. No, some part of that uh, certainly is also some some bit of it is treasury management where we kind of uh, since we have to pay that in dollars, we don't convert necessarily the INR amounts. We keep that as deposits and. Uh, uh, kind of uh, create create a kind of uh, a treasury structure. So so uh, some of these uh, 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 borrowings that we have is again backed by fixed deposits as a security. Uh, I mean partly I mean that that's a security that's given. Uh, so so it's it's also some bit of it is treasury management. Uh. Okay. And just a last bit on uh, working capital. I know uh, someone asked in the beginning also this question, but uh, uh, an increase of uh, uh, DSOs from uh, uh, roughly around 60 odd days to 73 is uh, decently uh, uh, high number. Uh, and, uh, and so, if you can give some uh, uh, explanation so there, there on that. Was, as, yeah, so there was one particular uh, large OTT payment, I mean, which we received just. Uh, 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 after after the quarter has closed, I had closed. Uh, so so that that led to that a bit of a blip. Uh. So from a normal uh, basis, uh, uh, what should be the number that we should be uh, expecting? It should be around that 64, 65 days. Oh, got it. Got it. Yeah, uh, those were the questions. Uh, thanks a lot for speaking. Thank you. Yeah. Next question is from the line of Kostu Bubna from BMSPL Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. So I, I basically had two questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, could you just give me a sense on uh, Root Mobile's presence in the fraud prevention space? How big is this uh, fraud, fraud prevention space uh, to Root Mobile right now? And how do you see... 
the space, uh, Root Mobile's presence growing in the space and the offerings in the space that Root Mobile has. That's the first question. And the second question is, uh, you know, I don't quite understand this deal. I'm sure you've got this question before. Uh, because they were, Proximus was trying to list TeleSign before, which is public knowledge, and that stack failed. And now they've done this deal through Root where the promoters are infusing money into Proximus, into TeleSign. So I'm just trying to understand, could you give us, some, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this, but could you give us some sort of indication as to a few years down the line, do you see TeleSign and Root operating under one entity? I think it's too early to comment. Uh, so, honestly, uh, Gautam, you want to add something to this? Yeah, I think I think the immediate focus right now is to kind of get the deal consummated. Once the deal is consummated, some of these strategic thought processes, I think, uh, will be discussed. At this point in time, as Rajiv said, uh, uh, I mean, none of these things are kind of there on the radar. No, but uh, why? But, but, no, but why was the deal structured this way then? Because cross-border mergers are are not possible in India, and hence the deal had to be structured in this way. But uh, if you look at it, uh, I, so I, think Gautam, I think I have already explained so many times about the whole deal rationale as a, I think uh, you can refer to multiple uh, interviews of mine and uh, in media also. I think I have explained very clearly why I chose the route mobile and why I wanted to read, sorry, Telesign and why I want to reinvest it back to Telesign. So probably if you want to know more about it, you can just give a separate call to us and I am happy to answer all your questions. Okay, that's fine. Could you answer the second part, which is about fraud, the, fr the fraud prevention segment and Root Mobile's presence? Sir? So, since the partnership with Telesign, Telesign is one of the leader in uh, digital fraud and digital identity uh, products. They got the more, most evolved uh, stack as compared to anybody in this current uh, c -class ecosystem. We believe that partnering, uh, bringing their entire stack to all the emerging countries where we have our presence. But right now, our stack is not evolved as what uh, TeleSign is, and we are definitely going to work with TeleSign to use their stack in all the emerging countries where we operate from. And potential-wise, I think uh, digital uh, identity has a huge potential. Uh, in next three to two, two to three years down the line, you will see that impact on our revenues as well. So currently, it's, you would say it's meaningless, the, the yes. root mobile's exposure to this segment. Is that the right assessment? And it will grow... As, uh, so, so we are, we see, uh, just to understand, there are multiple APIs needs to be opened by operators. Okay, for uh, thin swap APIs, uh, operator, we are dependent on operators. In India, only Vodafone and Jio has opened their API for thin swap. Airtel is still thinking about it. So the market itself is not ready in India. But in other markets, if you go to Europe or US, it is already uh, available, and that's why Telesign has a decent amount of revenue coming from DI business. Now we have made uh, inroads to Geo and Vodafone idea and we got their API access where we are going to use telesign stack to sell this product in Indian market or in the Indian country market, like emerging markets. Understood, understood. Great. And I'll get back to you guys on this because I read, I read everything about the deal, but I still had questions as to, you know, because... I'm happy to answer all your questions, and uh, because it is directly to me, you can call me also to understand more than why I have invested. I'm happy to answer all your That would be great. That would be great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sarang Sanil from RW Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. We will move to a next question from the line of Harsh Chaurasia from Vellum Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, congratulations, sir, uh, on a good set of numbers. So just there was a uh, one, uh, doubt, like recently there was an event from WhatsApp India where there was a lot of aggression on the business messaging part. So I just want to know how Root Mobile what the business messaging uh, offerings are unique from the business messaging of part of WhatsApp India, and how how are will we still relevant in this market? Like uh, when we then at the time we are seeing from the WhatsApp India part. So, so I think uh, if you attended that event, we were also part of that event. 
uh, and we also been invited by WhatsApp to be part of that event. Uh, and just to share about our relevance in this market, our recent deployment with uh, Delhi Metro, they were the first company to have this ticketing uh, system built for Delhi Metro, which has a conversational chat along with the conversational commerce integrated within the same app, and including our own bot, which is a robot. So I think we as a company have uh, built our stack, which is now capable enough of handling payment along with the conversation chat as well, along with the bot. So we are very much bullish and uh, we have seen the growth in our revenue in last quarter and we have seen the same growth in this quarter also coming from WhatsApp for uh, WhatsApp business messaging as well. Okay, okay. Understood, sir. Thank you. And uh, all the best for, for the milestones. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Park Patel, and retail investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir, and congratulations on the good set of numbers. I just wanted to follow up on the uh, question which was just asked around WhatsApp. As you see, uh, even Amazon today sends WhatsApp instead of SMS. So just wanted to understand how, what kind of impact will it have on your margins as well as you know, if and when globally the OTTs also shift to WhatsApp business messaging instead of uh, SMS, and what kind of efforts are we uh, putting in to uh, grow this uh, uh, side of business as well? So, part uh, our new product growth is 64 percent last quarter, right? And uh, as far as Root Mobile is concerned, we are a platform company. Any customer coming to RootMail platform, they have an option to select the channel they want to communicate with, whether it's WhatsApp, RCS, email, voice, or SMS, right? So, end of the day, we as a platform company are going to provide them all the bouquet of services that the customer select. We spend enough money to build the stack in-house, and now as a one single company, which has every single channel of communication available in one platform, probably we are the only in India who has the entire stack within one platform. Got it, sir. Thank you. And the last one, the second question which is fairly simple. So, in terms of the EBITDA margin for the firewall deals, uh, you know, with VI or even with other uh, smaller MNOs, so what kind of EBITDA margin can we uh, expect uh, on the VI side because it's a larger deal and also on with the smaller MNOs? So, let the deal uh, start, right? It's too early to come in. And uh, our, all our firewall deals are always over 25%, 20 to 25% uh, range. And so some of them are even 30 to 40% also. Got it. Thank you, Rajdeep. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Suresh Kumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, quick question on... The overall guidance, medium term guidance. Uh, I've seen various interviews from Lab uh, <clears throat> and we spoke about a billion dollar revenues in two to three years. And in some interviews, we're talking about a combined revenue of two billion dollars between Telefine and us. So, just want to get a, an update from you on what is the guidance that we can expect over the medium term, two to three years. So, oh, very much uh, whatever guidance I have given. During all my interviews, I'm stick with that guidance. Uh, we as an individual uh, uh, company level, we are definitely looking out to hit about a billion dollar revenue in two to three years down the line. So there's no change in terms of those guidance. Awesome. That's great news. And, and one last, again, on the industry specific question. Um, I mean, we're doing great. I'm a great momentum across various deals. What are the biggest risks? Uh, for you as a company, as well as uh, as an industry, I mean, are there any risks that you foresee? And how are we being prepared for it? So, I don't see the risk, honestly, because as a platform company, we have to innovate uh, every single quarter in a month. And uh, as far as our product stack, if you see, we are ready with almost all the changes required, market required in coming years down the line. And if the a particular channel is getting shipped from, uh, say, SMS to WhatsApp or WhatsApp to RCS. Probably we have all the channels. So our job is the risk is only that if we don't stop innovating, then there's a risk. Uh, we as a company, we are keep on in innovation, and I think uh, we will keep on doing this uh, 
on other channels also uh, for me i think right now i don't see any immediate risk uh, on overall business and anyway, thanks thanks for all your questions and good luck for all of you thanks thank you thank you next question is from the line of ronak cheda aurika capital please go ahead Hey, uh, thanks for giving me an opportunity again, uh, Rajdeep. Uh, just one strategic question for you. Uh, when we listen to the commentary of your global CPA is competition, right? Um, uh, most of these uh, players have been calling out slowdown in the uh, messaging side of the business or the communication marketing side of the business. Uh, Post merger, when you control the entire CPA business of the group uh, and the uh, targets which we have. Uh, um just wanted to get your thoughts on how are we thinking to you know uh, direct the business because uh, develop market seems to be maturing just your thoughts uh, just on a strategy point Sir, of view ronak is a ronak is a very good question but if you see the most of the develop market tech giants are based out of us their market is going to be the emerging market whether it's a facebook or a google right the potential growth for all these large uh, tech giants are in emerging market and we as a company are already a champion of this market we want to make sure that we empower uh, telesign to go and win more uh, accounts or more uh, destination with their relationship with those tech giants in that market and we as a company will support them for delivery and termination in this market so that is a synergy we see and that is where we believe that both the company has their own strength in different market so one is champion of a uh, developed market another one is champion of a emerging market combined both the company can create a great value uh, for the uh, as a one group understood so you don't see that as a challenge because we are where the entire business is going to be focused for the next 3 to 5 years from globally uh, global cpas business point of view that is what you see yep okay understood thank you so much for this thanks sir Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sangram Kanadia, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, you are. Please go ahead. Uh, firstly, congratulations on the highest ever revenue. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. My first question is: How will proximal deal affect the upcoming revenues or earnings in positive or negative way? and the second question is will the shares be delisted after the proximus deal and will the key managerial pers- uh, personnel be changed after the signing of the deal there is no plan of for delisting roop mobile and as i said my responsibility uh, for the overall group is going to more and i'm going to lead the entire cpas business of both the companies okay thank you thank you sir for answering my questions hope you achieve never heights in every quarter thank you thank you Thank you. Next question is from the line of Nikhil Chaudhary from Nuama. Please go ahead. Yeah, I think so. Giving opportunity again. Just uh, one question on uh, gross margin. Uh, gross margin has declined on Q2 basis, and uh, you know what uh, basically uh, uh, makes it more questionable is uh, uh, that is that happened despite of such a big increase in new product revenue, which increased by 53 percent Q and Q, and we generally have much higher gross margin. So if you can, you know, uh, tell us what happened there. Doctor, would answer this. Sorry, sorry, Nikhil. Can you please repeat it once again? Yeah. So our gross margin decreased by uh, 20 basis point on Q and Q basis, and that happened despite of new product revenue increasing by 53 percent Q and Q, which has much more higher gross margin generally. That's just very small amount uh, as compared to the 1,000 crore uh, revenue, right? So, uh, so uh, thank you. 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 Thank you.
on behalf of Root Mobile Limited that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines